Welcome to the JDC West 2016 Marketing Case Presentation, proudly presented by the Ministry of Agriculture. Thank you to our judges for being here with us today. Shelly Lukasiewicz from CPA Saskatchewan, Kate Lockhart from MCO, Nick Koshar from Refresh, Alana Cook from the Government of Saskatchewan, Kim McConnell from Ad Farm, Michael Hoffert from Farm Credit Canada, Tiffany Stevenson from the Ministry of Agriculture, and Mohammed Torshizi from the Department of Bioresource Policy, Business and Economics, and the College of Agriculture and Bioresources. Competitors today will have a maximum of 20 minutes to present. Immediately following the presentation, judges will have a total of five minutes to ask the presenters their desired questions. The volunteer, the, the volunteer timekeeper will show time cards at various intervals to indicate the remaining time and will stop any speaker who exceeds the maximum time limit. No questions, comments, cell phones, or picture taking will be permitted from the audience at any given time. The audience will only be permitted to applaud following the question and answer period. The audience is also banned from any material that bears the name or symbol of a competing university. And we also ask that the audience exit the room immediately following the question and answer period. I want you to picture for a minute a beautiful Sunday afternoon, not unlike today. You have a craving for a hot, juicy, tasty cheeseburger, so you head down to the local a and You notice something particular about the customers who are in that a and though. Not one of them is under the age of 65. Realizing that their customer base is slowly dying off, a and has begun aggressively targeting millennials with their anti-hormones and steroids in their beef campaign. Although we are unsure as to how much of an impact this has actually had on their sales, it is creating a conversation. People are genuinely concerned about the safety of their beef. Good afternoon, morning, good morning. My name is Greg, with me are my colleagues Rachel and Travis. We are Connect Consulting. We are here today to show you how utilizing logic appeals, targeting educated millennials, utilizing digital media and experiential marketing can help you to cut the misconceptions and achieve excellence in a changing industry. I now invite Rachel up and we will take you through the, the analysis of the industry and any problems that we see coming forward. So the primary issue at hand is there's an increasing misconception of the safety um, and origin of cattle farming. So looking at some secondary issues, we've identified three. We have awareness, reach of message, and there's no defined target market. So looking at awareness, this is driven by a lack of education um, and a negative there's a negative buzz in the media. You hear way more about the negative sides of beef um, and consuming it, and so this leads to consumers uh, having a misconception of the actual, um, actual things of beef. So, and reach of message. So this is driven by, like I said, there's more talk about the negative and harmful misconceptions of beef, and no defined target market. So this is driven by the need for an aligned target market. Um, we want to shift away from <coughs> current target markets. Right now, there seems to be more emphasis put on people who are already in the industry and know about the knowledge and have the knowledge of it. So we want to shift away from that and go after a different consumer. Um, looking at the industry, so right now there's, a dec there's declining beef sales. So this is, this is because there's been some issues with production, which has led to prices. Um, there's also been there's emphasis on fear marketing. So this is influenced by people um, having more huge reaches. Shows like Dr. Oz creating those misconceptions and consumers are easily influenced by what they see on TV and so this has played a huge role. Um, and also the growth of fast casual food. So 
Right, there's been a consistent quarterly loss um, for McDonald's in the past year, um, and they are the largest purchaser of beef. So this has been due to people shifting towards consuming healthier options, going to places like Subway. Um, so we feel that what, what we have to show you here today in our recommendation implementation, we can help move away <coughs> from this and create um, um, increase in sales of beef. Um, and also technology. So going forward, we can produce cattle cheaper, safer, and healthier. By using technology and innovation, um, we are going to be able to be more efficient, and which is going to have a less impact on the economy. Looking at it, the internal, so the Ministry of Agriculture has a huge advantage. People, 52% of consumers trust the government. They trust what they put out about health and safety of beef, and so this is a huge advantage. Also, they're committed. So this is going to gain that trust from, from consumers, which they need. And there's, there's an advantage of the Canadian brand. The Canadian brand is trusted. It's well known. When people see it, they know that it's, it's a good product and it's healthy. So this is something that we can use going forward. I'm now going to bring up Greg to go over a quantitative analysis. OK, thank you, Rachel. So as you can see here, 13% of Canadians work in agriculture. If you don't work in agriculture, your mom or your dad don't work in agriculture, you have a cousin who works in agriculture. There is someone that you can ask who will give you accurate information as to what exactly is the origin of your beef, where it comes from, what goes into it. Also, 98% of Canadian farms are family owned. There's this, the, the idea that everything's owned by Monsanto or Syngenta. They're filling it full of hormones and, and all these bad, awful things are making, giving you mutant food. That's not always the case. All these, these farms are family owned and operated. And why would someone who owns a family farm and is feeding their own family with their food put something in that is harmful to themselves and the ones that are closest to them? There's also been a 200% increase in the price of ground beef over the last eight years. This is absolutely massive. This is a huge driver, a power item, if you will, at supermarkets and grocery stores. In 2007, it was about $2.99 a pound for, for ground beef. Now it's at $5.99 per pound. This means people are consuming less. They're deciding, that they need to do a little more research. They're consuming it less though, so they're gonna put more time and effort when they are making that decision whether or not to consume that beef. So we've identified three consumer segments within the age range of 18 to 30. So looking at Lacavore Lauren. So this is gonna be someone who's, they're an animal protection advocate. We all have someone in our lives like this who's just really pro-animal and against like consumption of beef. So they're going to be highly opinionated. They're going to tell you, no, you shouldn't eat that. The hormones are bad. Um, and they're typically going to shop at farmer's markets. They're going to be going after that locally fresh uh, food. Um, and they're also going to, their purchases are going to be driven by the trend to eat healthier. Um, looking at farm boy Frank, so this is going to be someone who typically comes from a farming background. They know about the industry. So they're going to be, their purchases are going to be driven by value. They're going to be looking for the quality and price, making sure that they're getting what they're paying for. Um, and they view themselves as foodies, so they think that they're knowledgeable, and they are knowledgeable about the product. So we want to shift away from that consumer and go after educated Aaron. So this is going to be someone whose purchases are driven by the convenience and the value. So they're looking for that quality and the price, um, but they also may be busy, so they are sometimes going to be looking for that convenient product to buy. Um, and they are easily influenced by messages in the media. They're on the cusp. They don't know quite what to believe. They want to believe that what a is saying, that hormones are bad, but then they also hear that it's not. So this is the consumer you're going to go after, and you're going to be able to influence um, more easily and communicate those misconceptions. Um, and they care about their health to an extent. So, like I said, they're not going to be like the lack of world Lauren, who is pro-animal and all that. So, this is who we feel that the best consumer for you to go after. Um, I'm now going to bring up Travis to go over our decision criteria. <clears throat> Thank you, Rachel. So, before we get into looking to future plans, we've outlined three decision criteria. And they are as follows. First, your plan is to create awareness. That's great buzz. Get people talking. Because when you have people talking about you, they're interested in you and they'll, they'll lend you their ear. Secondly, it has to maximize your limited budget. A provincial campaign of this size, and to get across the message that you want to, you have to use every dollar to the fullest to get the most, the biggest result you can back from that dollar. Thirdly, we want to educate the target market. Uh, it's arguable that 
ANW, what they've done is a misleading campaign. And it's your job as an institute of the government to, to not tell them that it's wrong, that ANW is evil, but to tell, give them the tools to make that decision for themselves. So looking into uh, some alternatives, uh, these are different courses of action you can take. <laughs> Number one is pushing the Papa Burger. That's going directly at A&W saying you're wrong and we're right and this is why. Uh, this plan may create awareness but for the wrong reasons. It puts you in the wrong light in the public eye and also A&W, they just have a bigger budget than, we have, uh, than you have allocated us for this, uh, for this going ahead plan. So for those reasons, we reject this alternative. Moving ahead to our second alternative, Trotton traditionally. That's targeting uh, educated Aaron, as Rachel had stated, and using traditional methods. That's newspapers, that's radio ads, that's television. But these avenues aren't very uh, successful in attaining the target group that we want to attract. They don't read newspapers. If they're watching television, it's Netflix or it's streamed online. There's no commercials. And if they're listening to the radio, something's wrong because there's an aux cord in their vehicle and that's where they plug in. <laughs> For those reasons, we reject this alternative, which leads me into our recommendation. Cutting the misconceptions. We've developed two campaigns. One is geared toward educating the public, and the second one is geared towards beef sales. <clears throat> through unorthodox, uh, some would call it unorthodox strategies of marketing, through real marketing, experiential, and having a strong online presence, similar to uh, the, the uh, Alberta online presence that they have, where it's all facts. You know, that's our target market is based off facts. They don't like stories. They don't like different things like that. They want to know facts and that's what we've got for you. So I'm going to pass off to Greg. He's going to tell you how we're going to do this. Hey, thank you so much, Travis. So our short-term implementation, we're calling this planting the seed. The first thing you need to do, you've got to get your research done. We're talking about doing surveys with your target markets, maybe some focus groups. Sitting down with these people, making sure you know exactly what their preferences are. If they really, really are influenced by that hormones in, in their beef, you need to learn why they're influenced by that. What was the trigger? What made them believe that in the first place? And what can you do to influence them the other way? We've, we've allocated $10,000 to this, and we'll give you a far better understanding of the media and the messages that you'll need to put out. After this, we're going to have to select and meet with a creative agency. From here, we'll be able to see what is the best, best fit for you, what, who will be able to meet your, give you the, help you to achieve what needs you have, and give you the best options moving forward. We also are going to, at this time, develop the Cutting the Misconceptions campaign. So the development and with the $75,000 that includes your creative fees, creation of all the different media types, and all the creative stuff that will be involved. And we're going to do this in months three to four. So this is the first four months of our campaign. That's starting right now today in January. The reason we are doing this is because between May and August, that is when the most people buy beef. Beef sales raise a lot during this time of the year. So this is when we really want to make sure that the messages are going out there appropriate. People know what to expect, and people are realizing that maybe their hormones and steroids in their beef isn't the worst thing for them. So growing the crops, this is the medium term. This is when we get into the meat and potatoes of it all. This is when we're going to launch your digital campaign. We're talking about Facebook, Instagram, development of a new website, and search engine optimization. Facebook is very key because you are able to target it directly at your consumer. Millennials are on, always on Facebook. You can also target directly to people who have, for example, searched up information about the GMOs before or about hormones and steroids. Instagram advertising is also huge. This is a big one that a loves to focus on. So if you're someone who's perhaps looks into, maybe you follow Ag more than ever or different, different food sources, different <coughs> food pages, you like to, you're maybe not a foodie, but you like to look at food, you like to see cool recipes, maybe you follow Tasty. So this is for them, so you can target directly at them. Also the search engine optimization. If someone is Googling, what are hormones in beef? Wouldn't that be great if you had an ad come up immediately that told them that hormones in your beef isn't the worst thing for you? So we're allocating $34,000 to this, and this will be released between months four and eight. This is the duration of the summer season when people are getting out there, they're barbecuing, they're grilling. This is the best time to reach them. We also want to do bathroom and traditional advertising. It sounds funny to say that we're going to put, reach our target market in the bathroom, but these are a great way to show these millennials, and you can target them directly at them at universities, at bars, restaurants that are frequented by these people, you can put the ads directly in there. Wouldn't it be great if someone has nothing better to do while they're using the restroom, they look up and they see an advertisement that shows them about, with logic, what exactly goes in to beef. And also we are going to have a guerrilla marketing strategy called Beef on the Streets, which we'll talk about later. Get you to the next slide. Okay, so with the traditional advertising and the, the bathroom ads, 
We want to be clean and bold. We're talking reds, colors that really evoke a reaction, make people think, make people pay attention. We're using the logic appeal. If you just look up statistics about hormones in beef, it's astronomical how much of a misconcern, misconcern it is. If, you ha if someone is using the bathroom, for example, looks up and sees an advertisement that has a nice big juicy steak beside a piece of unattractive looking tofu, and it says, there's 1,000 times as many hormones in the tofu. That creates a reaction, that gets people thinking. That's, that's logical. You can't argue with science. If this person's educated, they believe, they believe in logic, they're gonna believe what you're telling them. Or also, it would be another good, good idea to have a big hamburger beside a, a box of french fries. There are actually more hormones in the french fries and people don't realize that. So this is another effective way that we can show this message. And it all, will all be tied together with the let's cut the misconceptions about beef tagline that we've come up with for you today with our messages. Beef on the streets. This is what we're super excited about. This is a guerrilla marketing campaign. It is just to build buzz. This is buzz is everything for you right now. So we're going to put cows on university campuses across the province. This sounds kind of ridiculous, but what we're going to do is work out an agreement between the university, maybe with a farmer, that we're going to have a pen somewhere on campus that's highly visible. People are going to be able to come up and look at a cow. There's no way that you can tell me that a millennial walking by a cow on their way to class isn't going to stop and take a selfie to send to their friends. <laughs> the pen is also going to be decorated with branding and messages about the campaign and, about, and allow them to go online and see more information as to how healthy the beef that they're consuming actually is. So this is harvesting. So this is where we're going to go into our long-term evaluation. So we need to see how well this, this does, especially for you when we're just doing an awareness campaign. It's very difficult to just simply go and measure market share. So what we're going to do is go look through online engagement, see how many more people are visiting your website, see what people are saying about you online, really monitoring your online engagement. Also, again, with the surveys and the focus groups, these are very key as to, to getting inside of your target consumer to make sure that moving forward, you can target them even better, give them better messages. The KPIs we have, a lot, we have aligned for you today are recall. Do people remember seeing your messages? Were they in a bathroom and they saw the, the beef sign? Or did they remember seeing the cow on campus? Net promoter score. Right now, a lot of people are very negative about the hormones in, in their beef. So we want to monitor to see how many more people are positive about it now than they were negative before. <coughs> Brand affinity. How willing are people to buy Canadian beef now as opposed to substitutes, especially with younger people who are more into, say, chicken or, for example, in pork, who's, who's also been getting a lot of attention? And sales. Are sales increasing to your target market? You've also asked us to give you another campaign as to uh, show people that there are advancements in agriculture and that it's not just about farming anymore. This ain't your grandpa's farm anymore. So what we're going to do is direct mail to university students, people who are about to get into the workforce, just so that they at least consider agriculture as a career option. We're going to go back to the digital advertising, similar to what we did with, with the uh, paying misconceptions, but it'll emphasize the technology. For example, maybe an Instagram post that has a sheaf of wheat, but one side of the sheaf of wheat it looks like an x-ray. It looks really technological, really advanced, kind of creates some buzz, gets people looking because they want to know more about it. And also we're going to develop an experiential marketing and aug augmented reality tour that people can go through. It will be placed at different career fairs, universities, maybe even high schools moving forward, where people can take an iPad and see the different technological advances that are happening in agriculture and how this can fit into their career path. And finally, we're going to launch this augmented reality in eight months, eight plus. This is after the summer camp months when we're back into school. This is when people will be able to uh, really engage and interact with it. So we have some long-term considerations as well. We want to expand the, the campaign to other provinces. It's very difficult right now for agriculture. You're competing with so many other industries, especially as so many of these industries are controlled by Ontario and Quebec who don't see the value in agriculture. They're more manufacturing based. So if you're able to work out a deal with Alberta or Manitoba moving forward that can help you to grow the campaign, this would be only great for you to create more synergies. We also want you to partner with local chefs, restaurateurs, and butchers. These people have enormous connections, they have a, a great customer base, these people are trusted about their food. So we want you to moving forward, maybe develop recipes and different advertisements with them, have them be the face of the campaign for you. We also want you to expand the augmented reality, as I had said, maybe going to high schools instead of just universities, and maybe some event sponsorship moving forward. This could be handing out beef jerky at different sports events, or at maybe wine and cheese or beer events. So I'll pass it off to Travis now, take us through our budget and our timeline. Okay, so here we have a summary of our budget. Uh, we were allocated $500,000 for this project, but we defined that $360,000 would suffice. 
Another common mix, misconception in business is if you throw money at marketing, it'll eventually come back to you. Well, it doesn't work that way. We, we've decided that this is the best way to spend your money. It's the best way to get the best bang for your buck. And uh, if you need to refer to that, please do. And moving on to our timeline, uh, we'll begin with our research, and as Greg had said, in months one and two. And eventually, in month eight, we'll evaluate the entire process, see what went, went wrong, what went right, and why. And with that, we can determine your impact. Our goals are to improve your net promoter score. Our goals are to increase the awareness of the community around you, Saskatchewan. Increased beef sales, we think 10% increase in your new target market. Uh, because you've been advertising more towards the farmers and the people who have uh, their hands in the agriculture industry, this new target market, uh, once they're educated that, you know, beef isn't as bad, you know, beef is less hormones than chicken. So they might opt for that more meals than, uh, than other times. So we expect an increase in sales there. And lastly, to create buzz, to get people talking. As I said before, if you have buzz, you have people talking about you, if they're interested in you, if they're going to listen to what you want to say. I'm going to pass it off to Rachel now, and she's going to take you through some risks. So with every great plan, there's always some risks. So we've identified two. Um, with our Beef on the Streets campaign, there might be some regulations against this. So if this is the case, we would mitigate it by just reconsidering other guerrilla marketing strategies. Um, also, if social media, social advertising does not gain traction with our target market. So we would mitigate this by developing new campaigns that are more geared towards that target market. So we started here today with the problem of how to, how, how there is an increase in misconception of the safety um, of beef right now. So we took you through how we're going to plant the seed of misconception in our consumer's mind by targeting educated Aaron. We showed you how going through our implementation plan, how we're going to help you grow the future of agriculture and how um, we're going to harvest connections in this industry in order to prosper in such a developing industry in order to achieve excellence. I'd like to thank you and we now open the floor to any questions. Yeah, absolutely. But Facebook still has the largest engagement rate. People are always on it. We have taken some new methods with uh, the Instagram. Instagram advertising is fairly new. People are very visual, so we are going to target them with that. But Facebook's tried and true. It's a great way to reach your target market. You can target it directly at them with uh, analytics that may not be as developed with new, more cutting edge technologies. It's also because of the limited marketing budget, this maximizes it for you. We, talk, we had talked about Snapchat, but we weren't sure how exactly we could advertise through it. Different avenues such as like Snapchat filters are great for events, but it doesn't make sense for developing your brand and developing your awareness right now. Absolutely. So we're talking beef, safety, health, hormones, steroids, different things along this line to make sure that it comes up and that they are able to see something that gives a different spin on things and not just an article from Food Babe telling you something uneducated about how she believes that this is the way it is. So that kind of ties into the target market we wanted you to go after. So it is going to be someone who is concerned about their health. So they are going to, they do work out, they go to the gym, um, they 
might take those supplements that help them, except we didn't, they're just, they're not fully the bodybuilder. Um, they are still that person who's a bit um, looking for that convenience. Um, and so, but they are still concerned about their health to an extent. And so, so I have a question on that. If you start going after those that are going forward with A and W, for example, you start cutting through the misconceptions, do you not suspect that they may counteract, counter you? And how would you react to that? Yeah, so right now AW is advertising, it's very it's very national wide, so I think that a campaign that is directed specifically at Saskatchewan maybe wouldn't get as much ten, uh, as much traction from them. We do have a, a lot of time for evaluation and money involved. There's also those focus groups to really see what consumers are thinking. So if there's any reaction on their part, you can adapt your campaign moving forward to make sure it is effective as possible. How do you plan on conducting the surveys and, and the target market at the beginning? If you give yourself a one to two month timeline, which isn't a long time, and you want to really, I mean, that's going to be the basis for your campaign. So how do you, how do you go about doing that effectively? Uh, we will conduct these surveys uh, through an incentivized program. We uh, did not list it, but it's, it was in our plans. Uh, it's basically, um, once, they, once they follow us on our Facebook page, like, we'll incentivize that. Uh, with, it, with what uh, kind of incent, uh, incentive, sorry. Uh, it's, with what kind of incentive, it's up to you. But the big thing is, you get them to like the page, and then we get their in, uh, information. Quick question then. Um, before the large lion's share of the market adopts a, a message, um, typically they look to a to the early adopters who who soak it in. Um, in a sentence, then, what is that message that compels them to get excited about this campaign and believe you? The tagline that we consider is tasty, safe Canadian beef. That is the simplest we can put it. We want to make sure that people know that it is safe, it is tasty, and that people are, those, oh, those opinion leaders, those early adopters, those people are the ones who are going to be able to tell you exactly what is important, what is relevant, and they were, they'll be more believable moving forward.